Hi, this is Keisha with New World Tarot, and I want to thank you for joining me today for a little quick video. And this video is going to be part of a series that I am calling a review and a reading. <laughs> so basically, I'm just taking some of my tarot decks that I love, some that I love, some that I like, and some that I really don't use that much just because I seem to just have a hard time really kind of connecting with the deck. And then I'd just like to do a very general short little reading just to kind of see how it kind of looks laid out and kind of spread um, out and how it kind of reads as well. Okay, so I hope if you are into tarot, you find these reviews helpful. And this is just something that I just love to do. I've been wanting to do for a while. So let's dive right in. So today we are doing a review and a reading with one of my favorite decks that I am loving right now, which is the Everyday Tarot by Biddy Tarot. So of course, if you're into tarot at all, you absolutely know who Biddy Tarot is. Uh, Brigitte Esselmont is the founder, creator, and CEO of, uh, of Biddy Tarot. And it is just an incredible um, international resource. She has truly made a one-of-a-kind uh, company that is dedicated to uh, tarot education, okay? And just getting everyone to read the cards. And it just has so many amazing um, posts that she puts in. Uh, she has her podcast is ridiculous. It's awesome. It has uh, the who's who, you know, of, of tarotpreneurs, <laughs> as I like to call them, and people who are big voices in, in the tarot world. And it just has such practical and great information about reading the cards, about starting your tarot business, about, um, basically everything you would need to know about spirituality, even intuition, I highly, highly recommend that, you know, if you haven't by now, definitely check her out at www.biddytarot.com. And finally, um, she has come out with, I believe this came out in October, I believe. She came out with a book called Everyday Tarot and uh, her own little mini tarot deck that we have here. And by mini, it is a complete card deck of 78 cards. So it's not, that's not short there, but mini by size. These are basically small, uh, they're pretty small compared to how, uh, what tarot cards usually are. I think tarot size usually is like three inches wide by like five inches long or something like that. And these are a fraction of that. These are definitely, um, travel size. I actually, and that's why I love these cards. I carry these around in my purse all the time <laughs> literally every day i have these in my in my purse and just like the name i've actually used these these are my daily draw cards actually i um use these cards to to basically do my two card draw i do a do two card daily draw every day and this right now is the ideal my favorite deck to do that with okay and this comes in a beautiful box with a see if I can show here a magnetic a magnetic let me see if I can here we go okay a beautiful box it has a magnetic flap okay so you see how that kind of because it is magnetized which is really really beautiful it's a nice hard box okay you have the symbol up top everyday tarot with her the logo beautiful logo what you'll see is when we dive into the cards this actually is on the back of the cards Okay, we we have a side here. All right, other so here is the nine of pentacles, which one of, one of my favorite tarot cards. Here, okay, and on the side we have the empress represented. Also another one of my favorite tarot cards. Okay, and if we open it up, flip it open, we have the lantern from the hermit card is really super cute okay so we have a little back piece here okay and what it says here is a modern approach to the ancient wisdom of tarot the everyday tarot deck gives modern soul seekers an intuitive tool to access their inner wisdom and create an inspired life this kit features a beautiful il beautifully il illustrated deck and an 88 page guide to the cards that will appeal to tarot veterans and novices alike. And she has um, see if I can, three pictures 
here of tarot cards, the Queen of Wands, Ace of Cups, and the High Priestess depicted on the back. Okay. So let's open it up and let's see what we have inside. And I lo absolutely love this. This is just a beautiful little package that I adore. Okay. And one thing um, you'll probably notice, you can probably tell from the three cards that are depicted here, is she she has kept to one color scheme. So all these cards have this, which I love. I love this. All these cards have the same uh, purple, gold, and white um, color scheme. And for those of you that use colors in your readings, this might, you know, be a detriment. Or it just might be something that you have to learn kind of to not depend on so much with this deck in particular. Because again, there's not, you don't have all these different colors to kind of go off of for your readings. Okay, so I'm going to open it up and here is what it looks like. So we have our deck here on this side and then we have our guidebook here. And it's super cute. The guidebook kind of just slides in to this little sleeve. The back cover we have, it just kind of opens up, slides right into this little sleeve, just like so, and goes in there like that. It's super cute. I really, really, really enjoy this. Okay, so first of all, let's take a look at the guidebook. So this is the, our little guidebook that comes with it. Okay, Everyday, Everyday Tarot Deck guidebook. Very cute. And so if we open it up, all right, here's our first page. Okay, so we have the, the author here, uh, Bridgie Esselmont, and it's illustrated by Eleanor Grosch, which I love. Good job, Eleanor. <laughs> and Bridgie, this is a beautiful deck. I absolutely love this deck. And it, you know, Running Press Philadelphia. I'm actually in the Philadelphia area, so <laughs> it's right next door to me. Okay, and... All right, we have our table of contents here, and it jumps right in, okay? So with hers, um, she's not so much keywords. She doesn't really use keywords, I notice, okay? It pretty much just has some blurbs, so just a couple sentences on each one. So first card that we have here is full, the full, card zero. All right, upright meetings, new opportunities, and beginnings are available to you. Be open-minded and curious, ready to explore and discover new things. Play, have fun, and be spontaneous. Reversed, for those of you that read reversals, I do. It says, you have conceived of a new project but aren't ready to birth it just yet. You're worried about the risk and fear of the unknown. Okay, so this is interesting. And um, I don't really use this guidebook so much. Obviously, I, mean, I don't really use any guidebooks too much at this point. In, in my tarot. I do love guidebooks though because what I like to do is I like do like to read them and see how the deck creators have um, interpreted their interpretations and it can only learning different people's interpretations of cards can only add and enrich our understanding. So even though we we, we have set meanings um, that we already assigned to each card it can never ever ever hurt us to open up and just to kind of always expand on our understanding, on our um, interpretations of cards, okay? And these are interesting. Um, the only thing is the full can has so many different layers and meanings. This kind of sort of skims the surface. It doesn't really dive too, too deep into it, but it is something. And what's funny is I actually, if she actually has card meanings on her website, as well as I think she sells a condensed book that have all of her card meanings all together. And those meanings are so much deeper. Um, she provides keywords and the keywords there are more, more inclusive to me of what the cards rep can represent. And this is kind of very, uh, very surface, but, but it's, it's good. Okay. So in going through here, so one thing you'll notice is there are no pictures of the cards on the guidebook. There's just, we just have the name in the little corner. You have what, what Trump number it is, you know, one magician, two high priestess. Okay. And when you get to the suits, you have, let's see here. Find the beginning of the suits. 
from here. Okay, so we have a marker, the Minor Arcana. And each suit has its own little title page. Okay, so interesting. And I always, always notice her order is a little different than what I usually consider uh, the classic. I mean, it, again, it's my own personal uh, preference. My classic, what I consider the classic order of the tarot is wands, cups, swords, and then pentacles. Um, I think she, here she starts with swords. So here we have the ace and we have little symbols, little symbols of, you know, the swords. We have the numbers, two, three, all right, four, five. And we have page, all right, suit of cups, same thing. Now we have a little cup symbol, okay. Then we have suit of wands, going all the way through, and the suit of pentacles, okay. And here at the very back, there's a little blurb about the book that actually, this is sold separately. I did check out the book. Um, it to me seems like a wonderful book, but geared more towards tarot beginners. I, I actually, um, went to a Barnes and Noble and I actually just leafed through it a little bit. I, what I loved about it though was I found out more about Brigitte Esselmont and how she came to, uh, found Biddy Tarot and stuff. That was, that was to me very fascinating. Um, as far as like where I am in my tarot journey, I didn't consider it personally an essential read. However, I wish I had it back when I started because it seems like an amazing book for people who are getting, just getting into tarot. I definitely would, just looking at it, just knowing who she is and what she's all about and just knowing what an amazing company she is, um, I would definitely recommend it for beginner tarot. My first tarot beginner book was... Um, a Magical Course in Tarot by Michelle Morgan, which was amazing. I read that thing, you know, until it was like falling apart in the, in the sea. And this seems like if I had started um, and I had found that book, this would be, that would be the same situation. I probably would read that thing over and over. Okay, so that is the guidebook. So I'm going to put place that back in here. Get it in. Okay. Okay, so let's look into the cards itself. Okay, so again, we have this little mag cute magnetic box. Now, I actually have a letter opener here. Okay, and you may wonder why I have it. And if you look at the reviews for this particular deck, the number one complaint is actually opening the box. And I kind of have to agree because I literally can't do it without some sort of to implement like this the letter opener works perfectly so I'll show that to you in a second um, it, it's easy to open this way but in order to access the cards what you're gonna have to do is open the top of this and it, it's a clear flap that closes opens and closes it'll show you in a second and it's impossible to get your finger in this crack or any crack to open it so I've actually used this letter opener, and what's funny is, I don't even know how I got this letter opener, but it's it's awesome, I love it. And I haven't given it two thoughts, I haven't touched this thing in years. And what, what, now what I find, it's a perfect, um, I actually carry this in my purse now. <laughs> I'm so psycho, I know, right? And I carry this in my purse now for the explicit reason, is I use it to open this box. So every day when I'm doing my, uh, my two card tarot draw, I open this box. And of course, I also use it for bigger spreads as well and to read for others if they like this design. So how I open it is I take my <laughs> letter opener and I actually am going to stick it in this little crack and pop it up. So you see how it this popped up? So that's not pretty much impossible to do without using some sort of instrument. You also notice this, I have scotch tape here, which is, so this is not part of the original design. This actually started to crack open because I've used it so much and I actually taped it to keep it in place so that I have something to cover. Okay. So unlike a lot of reviews, I'm not, I'm using, I'm doing this review way after I've gotten this box, gotten this deck and, and used it for a while. I'm not doing it straight out the thing. So I've already, um, kind of noticed some things happening. So this, over time, this began to, to come off. I had to tape it in place. I also lost two flaps. There were actually two inside flaps that met in the middle that were here that would be kind of like a box, you know, 
that would kind of reinforce keeping this closed, um, similar to uh, the bottom. Like, I don't know if you can see, but there's actually underneath this big clear flash, flap, there's two little side flaps that had the same thing on the top, but it has since fallen off just from use. So this is the only thing keeping this, keeping these cards from, you know, spilling out the top. So I had to make sure I taped this back on. All right. So let's check it out. Let's open up the box. See what we got. Okay. So I'm going to, again, pop it. Okay. Open that up and slide out my cards. Okay. And so you also notice there's a piece of styrofoam in here as well. And I keep that because it actually keeps the cards uh, still and in place. So I've, I don't throw it out. I just keep it in there and it helps just keep them still. Okay. So here we have our, our cards, our 78 cards. And beautifully, these cards are gilded in gold. Now, what I will say is, I don't know if you can see, it actually has dulled since I purchased them. When I originally opened this box, I was like, oh my goodness, they were bright, shiny, you know, really tin foil gold, spark sparkly gold gilded sides. And over time, you know, with my shuffling and my use, it's actually dulled. I, it's still gold, still very much gold, still looks beautiful, still looks amazing, but it's not, I predict this will happen to your deck. After you've used it, it will kind of lose its, it will kind of dull in, in, in the gold gilding on the side. But it's beautiful. I absolutely love it. Okay, so here are card backs. There are reversible. Um, Biddy Tarot is a, uh, you know, a proponent. Of course, everybody reads, you don't have to read in reversals, but she's a proponent of learning how to do reversals. And I could, I agree. I actually, when I started, I actually took an educational course through a program. At the time, I kind of thought I was going to make the choice not to read reversals. I think th basically because the first tarot book I ever had, which was, uh, I mentioned a magical course in tarot by Michelle Morgan, she mentioned she didn't like reversals and how it kind of screwed with the image and she didn't think there was any use for them. So I kind of took that from her. However, um, as, as I progressed and as I took, uh, I took a, a tarot course through Biddy Tarot, I changed my mind. I basically decided that it did um, actually open up my understanding of different cards, depending on if they were pulled um, in reverse or upright. It also helps with directionality as well. Oftentimes when you lay out the tarot card, if a card is reversed, it will be facing a certain direction, facing a certain card, and that can help to clarify or um, place emphasis on something that you that is helpful to you to know. Okay, so let's do this here. Let's see, it's a king. All right, so let's go. Let's go through this card by card. Okay, so first we have the full. All right, card zero. And again, you'll notice these are all going to have the same color scheme. They're all purple, gold, and white. So, beautiful. All right, we have the Magician. The High Priestess. The Empress. Love it. Love how with that pregnant belly <laughs> and the emperor I love these designs they're very um uh modern art you know what I mean like uh very kind of minimalistic sort of I don't want to say there's a lot of there's details in here but it's 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 it seems to be minimal minimalistic sort of in style all right at the higher font The lovers, the 
chariot. Let's see if I can get a good picture of this. All right, we have strength. The hermit. I love that. So pretty. So pretty. The wheel of fortune. So as you can see, these cards are very close to the original Rider Waite Smith symbolism. So this can actually be a, you can, to me, you can use this as like a first deck without picking up an actual like Rider Waite Smith deck. If that makes any sense. Like, um, of course, you know, when I started, my first deck was the actual, like, you know, Rider Waite Smith. And, um, uh, let me see here. Like, for example, you know, mine, the one that I have is also a, uh, mini deck as well. I, so yeah, I carry around two decks with me at all times. <laughs> Kind of crazy that way. But for example, you know, like this is your cl classic Rider Waite Smith imagery. Something like that. And, you know, this sort of, this sort of thing. And these hold so close to that, uh, that you can use these. Like they're really beautiful interpretations. I like it. Nice. Excellent. The Hanged Man. Death. I love that. Look at that. Temperance. Mm -hmm. Devil. I love this depiction. I love the head. I love the hand coming up with the the two ropes, the two chains, leashes. <laughs> In his hand, loosely, of course, loosely, very loosely tied around the man and the woman. And you can, again, you can so very, very closely mirroring the original Rider Waite Smith image with the tails on fire, the, the uh, chains around the neck, the horns on the, the, the man and the woman. Okay, symbolizing that the longer you spend time with the devil, the more like him you become. <laughs> Okay, so I love it, and it just adds just enough of you, of she puts enough of her their own her and Eleanor of their own touch on this to make them unique, but they're at the same time very close to the Rider Waite. The Tower. Ooh, see so it fall right out of there. And the Star. Beautiful star card, absolutely gorgeous. The moon, love it. Spooky, spooky moon, beautiful card. And after the moon, we have the sun. And we have judgment. And the world. 
love this world card. That's <laughs> such a shame. I haven't pulled this card in such a long time. <laughs> like when I do my daily draw readings, this is probably one of my favorite cards in the deck. Um, the world card in general is probably is one of my favorite cards. And this is a, this is one of my favorite renditions of it. Like this is just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Like look at that. Like, wow. All right, so that was our major arcana. Okay, so now let's take a look at our minor arcana. So let's begin with the suit of wands. So we have the ace of wands, and I love the aces. I love all of the aces in this deck. I think they're all lovely to look at. And I apologize. I wish my camera was a little better at self-correcting, but it doesn't seem to be. Okay, and... I love it. Okay, this is just it's just some beautiful ace cards. It's ace of wands. We got the two of wands. Okay. Excellent. Looking off from her castle battlements. And one thing I love about this deck that I don't know if you've noticed, there's a lot more female protagonists in the cards, female characters. Um, oftentimes the writer Wade Smith, the character is male most of the time. And there's a lot of women that are stars of these cards. And I love that. I absolutely love female centered decks like this. It is great. It's refreshing to see. Okay. For example, another one, which is traditionally a male. We have the three of wands. Look at that. I love it. Just looking out. It looks like wind you can always see like the wind blowing her hair here as she the wind coming off the sea the sea breeze as she looks out at her ships all right watching her ships come in wondering if there's another any more ships that are going to be coming in to bring her the fruit of her work beautiful okay we have the four of wands Beautiful. I love it. It's just all about Jubilee, all about celebration. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay. And we have the Five of Wands. And we have the Six of Wands. Beautiful card as well. Once again, we have another woman. High up. High in life right now. Enjoying, enjoying her, her victory. Okay, and we also have our Seven of Wands as well. I love that. She, once again, she fighting off, fighting for what she, you know, what she has built, what she has worked for, what she has created, and what she wants, fighting for what she desires. Seven. All right, we have the Eight of Wands. I love that with the, uh, Birds accompanying the doves, actually, accompanying the, um, the wands that are flying. So to me, you know, symbolic of the universe is also going to throw in its weight along with yours. You know, if when, you, when the timing is divine, the timing is right, you act and the universe is right along with you to guide your wands into place, to protect your desires, to protect your plans and endeavors, and to make sure that they land where they're supposed to. We have the Nine of Wands. Oh, look at him. He's all beat up. <laughs> nice. Okay. Okay, we have the uh, Ten of Wands. Heavy, heavy burden here. Okay. 
And now we have the court cards. We have the page here. Love it. It's love. I love the dress is not just, um, you know, this can be, man, this can be Roman, you know, Roman Greco dress. This could be, um, this can be, you know, sub sub-Saharan African dress, West African dress. So I like how she kind of ha has played with some of the, um, the design of the clothing. Okay. We have the Knight of Wands and look at that. Look at that. All this fire on the helmet, fire in the mane of the horse, fire on the hooves of the horse, the sun around the knight's head. Like this is a beautiful rendition of the Knight of Wands. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Lots of fire in that card, <laughs> as there should be. This is the Queen of Wands. Beautiful. I love her. Love her. She has sort of an Egyptian sort of look going on here. She got her, the cat looks very Egyptian down there. Okay, she has her sunflower and her wand in the other hand. And I love it. You can see the sun a little bit in the upper uh, right hand corner peeking out. Beautiful card. I adore it. Okay. And finally, we have the King of Wands. Okay. Have him. Nice. And he is beautiful as well. He literally has a fire in the palm of his hand. I love that. Flames on the crown. Looking good. Okay, we have the suit of cups now. We have our ace of cups. Love this ace of cups. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And the two of cups we have. Three of Cups. See, very traditional imagery. Three women. The Four of Cups. This is very, very just dead on, just like the uh, Rider Waite Smith Four of Cups. Beat per beat, you know, got everything here. The same stance. All right, Five of Cups. It's very similar as well, even down to the bridge in the background. All right, we have the Six of Cups. The Seven of Cups. Nice. You can see all the choices that you have, all the temptations of the emotions, of fantasy, nightmares, <laughs> all of it. And we have the Eight of Cups walking away to something better. Nine of Cups. Hmm. Arms crossed. Yeah. We got the finally the Ten of Cups. Hmm. 
Nice. Happy home. Happy family. All right. So court cards, you got the page. Love her dress here. Fish coming out the cup. Okay. And we have the Knight of Cups. I do like him. Beautiful. I like the detail of the, there's, I don't know if you can see that, if I can't, but there's like, there's little fish along his reins, <laughs> the horse's reins. I like that. It's a nice little detail. And we have the queen of cups. I love, I love the mermaid, um, symbol, symbol, symbology, <laughs> symbolism that, um, when people, some artists choose to go with, I love it. I think it's very accurate to me. It's what I think of. Holding her covered, her covered cup, representing the subconscious mind, the secrets of the subconscious. Okay, then we have the king of cups, and they also they made him a merman too. <laughs> I love it. Look at that. Yeah, beautiful. All right, so we are almost there. We got just two more suits to go. So we have the uh, Ace of Swords up next. I love this Ace. These Aces are some of, are so, thus far, are some of my favorite Aces of all the decks that I have. They're just absolutely gorgeous. Like, look at that. That's really beautiful. And we have the Two of Swords. And what I love about this this card in particular is I love that um, they gave her directionality. So I don't know if you, uh, recall, but the original Rider Waite Smith Two of Swords has her looking dead on, like out towards the, the viewer. And for this one, she's actually looking to one side. And this is really, when the times that this has come up, this card to me is all about, um, mental indecision. You know, it's about kind of cutting off my intuition, overthinking things, you know, over being over logical about things and not listening to my heart at all. And when I get this card, I tend to pull one or two cards, you know, depending on what I've done to see what are my choices, what, the, what are the two decisions that I need to make. And also based upon, you know, if I pull it upright or if I pull it in reverse, it will be, it will give me a hint. It's done. It's been so dead on about what I'm leaning towards or what I have been, this, the decision that I have been making. It will, you know, be, it will cause me to think, is this the right decision that I should be doing? Or should I look perhaps what's behind me, you know, or, you know, vice versa. Maybe I've been, she is looking to something I need to do. So it's really cool. And the way I use this card to kind of, you know, think about what I've, what me or, or someone else has been, the choices that it have, has been made. All right. We have the three of swords. Lovely. Wow. Four of swords. All right, five of swords. Six of swords. Moving on. Hopefully something better. Lovely. Seven of Swords. Eight of Swords. Uh, all tied up. Nine 
Nine of Swords. Okay. Hmm. Wow. And Ten of Swords. Love it. I even love how the swords here are different colors. Nice. Okay, we got our core card. We got the page of swords. Looks like he's in a very Greco Roman sort of situation here with his wardrobe. The Knight of Swords, love it. And I love this knight is a woman. And she is in action. Just flying through the air, ready to attack and conquer. The what she's attacking and conquer, she may not even know. <laughs> she just knows she wants to attack it and conquer it. That's it. Yes. And we got the Queen of Swords. This is the, this is the card that I choose as my significator. I love it. I love how regal she looks here. Again, very, um, it could be her dress could be Egyptian, you know, could be, could be African, Sub-Saharan African, could be East African, could be Mediterranean, but I love it. It looks beautiful. And we have the King of Swords. He looks very wise and ready to make some decisions. Love this. Yeah. All right, finally, we have our last suit, the suit of pentacles, ace of pentacles, beautiful ace, absolutely gorgeous. I'm a fan. Two of Pentacles. We have the Three of Pentacles. And four of pentacles. <clears throat> and we have the five. Love that. Notoriously one of the not so auspicious cards of the deck, but this this rendition of it is beautiful to look at. So yeah, this is a deck definitely that even though I might pull a card, I'm like, uh, you know, I don't didn't necessarily want to get that card today. But I'll tell you what, these cards are so beautiful that even the you know, the ones that are traditionally like, uh, you know, I just love it all. I just love staring at the image. So even when medicine is delivered, it's a little bit bitter, <laughs> you know, it's beautiful imagery nonetheless, which I enjoy. We have our six of pentacles. And seven of pentacles. Once again, I love the female character. Okay. Checking in on wondering if her investment is going to pay off. We have our hard working working woman here and our eight of pentacles. Hmm. 
Yes. And we have our nine of pentacles. One of my favorite cards, as I've mentioned before, with her falcon and her grapes and pentacles in the background. And we have our ten of pentacles. See the family here. Doing pretty well. At least financially. Okay. All right, and then we finally have our court cards. We have our beautiful page of pentacles here. Beautiful card. Love it. All her flowers. Okay, and we have our Knight of Pentacles. Okay, not so much movement in charge from him, as is his case. A little more planning he likes to do before moving. Okay, and we have our Queen of Pentacles. Lovely, lovely card here. Beautiful with her long golden hair. Holding a pentacle. We even have a little bunny rabbit <laughs> in the corner. Can't forget about him. And finally our king. Mighty king of pentacles. Excellent. All right. So that is the whole everyday tarot Biddy by Biddy Tarot deck. And I want to do just a super quick reading with this and just lay out the cards a little bit. And um, now I don't have time to really um, blend it and shuffle it how I like to. I, I use a method. Basically, I kind of call it five by five, which is to make five piles and then shuffle each pile and then shuffle them together and I repeat that five times and by the end of that process I have a pretty thoroughly blended deck but I don't really have time for all of that today so I'm going to do a quick shuffle and I'm going to then um, do lay out some cards here so one question that we can kind of ask is um, being that the, we're now heading from winter into spring okay at least where I live in the uh, northern hemisphere here what as a community okay what can we do to really help bring in um let go of some old energy and bring in some new energy okay and what we're going to do is and i like to do reversals so i like to do a little let's see uh, 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 uh. All right, do a little switcheroo here. Do a little reversal. That on top. Okay, so we're going to do this in three cards. Okay, a little shuffle. So we're going to pull three cards and just ask, you know, what can we, um, you know, what can we, leave behind what can we bring in and what do we need to learn that we, that over the, from the past winter that can help us to get better get stronger as individuals okay so let's do this okay so first card that we're going to pull here okay so what cards one in three cards um the first question we're going to ask to best harness the energies of spring, what can we le learn to leave behind in the winter and not bring ahead of us into the spring? Okay, so our first card we have the King of Pentacles. Okay, see them here. And our second question that we're going to ask is what energies can we learn to bring into us with this spring? Okay, and for this card, we got the Page of Swords 
reversed. Okay. And lastly, um, what do what what lessons basically can we learn? Do we need to learn? Okay, over this past winter, what lessons of the the past winter can we use to help us grow? Okay, and for that we have the Ten of Swords reversed. All right, beautiful. Okay, so loving this these cards here as you see they make a beautiful um coloration i really do love the choice to make them all the same color scheme they really lay out gorgeously you know as you can tell so for as far as what lesson what um energy can we leave behind in the winter we have here the king of pentacles now the king of pentacles is really all about mastery he's all about um total control over your your uh, practical situations, over your um, matters of home, matters of finance, matters of resources, the things that um, you really want to just kind of hunker down and just kind of, it's not really fun so much, but it's the stuff that's not fun, but that you need to do. And when I see the King of Pentacles here in this position, I think of it being a situation where you are basically taking life very seriously. Um, it's being very no fun, having not, not having much fun, and just doing what needs done because it's important and because it needs done. This can be things such as, you know, balancing your checkbook or scrubbing the floor. That sort of thing is what I think of. And when I see it here, I, in, as far as what we need to leave behind, I see as the spring is now... It's not about work so much. It's about go outside and play. <laughs> it's about releasing, you know, releasing the the heaviness of this winter season. Okay, it's the winter is definitely a very practical season. So when I think I think of winter, I think of fashion kind of falls by the wayside, and it you, the, you dress basically to for practicality. You dress according to what's going to be comfortable, what's going to keep me warm, what's going to keep me dry. And now with the spring, it's time to, to have fun. Dress, dress in what, you know, what you look cute in. <laughs> dress in what you, the colors that you like. Pick things by color now instead of by what's most practical. Okay, so I see this as being about have fun, have more fun. As far as what we need to do more of, what energy we need to bring more of this spring, we have the Page of Swords reversed. So to me, the page, the page is all about, um, uh, the Page of Swords particularly, is really about truth. And he's really about just kind of uh, naively, just kind of expressing yourself and speaking your mind. And when I see this card here for this answer, pull it in reverse, I kind of see this being a more internal um, answer. So in other words, I think this is a time to really seek out your own, your own self-expression. Um, really to kind of, and you know, explore the truth about yourself. Okay. So find out what you like, what, you know, what you, what you're into, what makes you, you, and just really explore your own, you know, your own, uh, personal truth. Okay. And just kind of, kind of just really kind of ex explore that more inside. And as far as what this last card here, as far as like what um, we should learn, uh, you know, lessons that we should learn regarding the past winter, we have the Ten of Swords reversed. And when I see the Ten of Swords, um, especially the Ten of Swords upright, I kind of think of a basically a, a, an end to things. And when I see this card here reversed, I have an emphasis on the sun that is here in the corner. And I kind of think about, you know, the swords kind of being able to fall out of the man's back and that this can be a rebirth of a situation. So basically, what is spring but a, but a rebirth, a regenesis, a regeneration of life? And the whole lesson is just the, the, basically the lesson of winter is just how there are days in winter where we think, how can we go on? It's like, it's so hard. It's just, I'm, you know, 
it's just, I'm dreary. I'm, I'm kind of feeling kind of depressed. I'm cold. I'm uncomfortable. My fingers hurt. Very shortly, in very short time, you're going to be basking in sun. You're going to be, you know, laying on a beach somewhere, not wearing very little clothing. And you're going to be in water, you know, swimming around with a big smell on your face. And so it just kind of, just like winter, and when you're in the depth of winter and you think this this will never end, it does end. Life is cyclical. And, and you are going to see the spring. Keep And the lesson here is to keep that in mind for your life. As dark as it gets, as bad as it gets, you're always going to have energetic spring. Okay? And I even see here the page facing this Ten of Swords now because of his reversal. He's now facing it as this being an internal truth. Okay, your own inclination, your own strength to regenerate and to always come back from the quote unquote dead. Okay, you're never down and out permanently, even though it may always feel bad. You know, always you always are going to get a uh, resurgence of energy. You're always going to come back up and rebirth yourself. Okay, so I want to thank you so much for joining me for this review and a reading. And I hope this made a decision for you as as far as if this tarot deck is for you. I absolutely love and adore this tarot deck. And I hope that uh, this helps you make a decision. It is beautiful. I've had some amazing readings with this um, for myself and for others. And I hope that this makes a decision easier for you. And this helped. All right. Well, thank you very much. And we will see you next time. Be blessed. Be safe. Be happy. Be joyful. And take care of yourself. All right.